Uh, companies around the world have had to quickly adapt to fast-paced changes in the marketplace filled with countless tools and competing processes. One of these is Symphony, a secure and open collaboration platform, which since it was founded just over four years ago, now reaches 430,000 licensed users. Well, joining us now to look at how solutions and tools can support financial services is Craig Butterworth. Now, Craig is head of global account management at Symphony. Welcome to Cyprus Television, Craig. Tell us a bit about yourself, because again, it sort of gives us a sense of context of this conversation and the uniqueness of what you do. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, so yes, yeah, so my role uh, as head of global account management at Symphony. So my team's responsible for partnering with our biggest, most strategically important customers. In many cases, also our shareholders. In fact, to help them get the most out of the platform uh, as a really core cool foundational pillar of their broader digital transformation strategy. Uh, and then equally, where they spot opportunities um, for us to kind of partner with them to solve kind of tangible industry pain points to feed that into our own business strategy and roadmap. Um, maybe my background though actually is really relevant here as well. So actually only been with Symphony for kind of sort of six weeks. Um, prior to that though, spent nearly 20 years working for investment banks. Um, initially on, on the kind of fixed income sales side. So working it's at places- Bond markets basically. That's right, that's right. So working at Goldman, RBS, State Street, uh, ran European fixed income sales at RBC um, and then joined Nomura six years or so ago, initially as the COO for global market sales. But then for the last three years, I ran the client ecosystem program globally. So that was a business-led, front-to-back digital transformation program, really focused on improving client service, um, in improving internal efficiency and technology agility. Um, I guess the interesting thing for me, having sort of spent 20 odd years in the industry, is, is just seeing just how many pain points there are. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fascinating thing for me to come this side of the fence is really to be able to leverage Sym Symphony to, to try and solve some of those common industry uh, pain points. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing for me, I guess, as well is, I guess, having had that kind of frontline seat on the trading floor, seen some incredible things kind of pan out, geopolitical events, et cetera, you know, typically viewed as the maybe the more glamorous seat, if you like, in, in capital markets. Actually, in a weird way, this kind of digital transformation space is the area that I'm most passionate about. I found the most challenging, the most rewarding, I guess really because the industry um, has really faced a tsunami of challenges in the post-credit crisis era. You know, yeah. fee pools that are shrinking, cost pressures that are ballooning thanks to new regulation and things like Brexit. Um, so really there's this kind of existential battleground in a way. Mm -hmm. The need for digital transformation is what's going to deliver us a sustainable financial services industry for the future. Right. So being at the part of that is really mm. uh, very exciting. Okay. So let's talk about Symph uh, Symphony itself. Uh, you've been there for six weeks. You're beginning your journey with them in, in many respects. But what, uh, what unique value have you seen it bring to its, uh, its customers? Yeah. So I think the thing with Symphony is it provides um, a very targeted and specific solution for financial services. Um, and in particular, our, our product, our platform, I should say, is differentiated by its approach to security, uh, compliance, and community. So maybe just spending a second uh, elaborating on each of those. So I guess, first of all, we're the only platform that offers secure end-to-end -end encryption but at the same time uh, gives customers their, their own keys that they own themselves. Um, I think on the compliance side, you know, we're a platform where we kind of have out the box functionality for compliance, surveillance, monitoring and auditing, all those not very exciting things, but, but really important things. And then on the community side, we have 405 different clients, 450 odd thousand users, um, all using a mixture of permanent chat, video, voice, screen sharing, file sharing capabilities. And I guess then the last point is you know, our, our community is externally enabled. So we have this concept of an active external directory. So where we have different customers using us at different banks, asset managers, et cetera, they can all communi communicate and collaborate together. It's, it's hard to find one word which really encapsulates everything that Symphony does, but I'm going to throw it back at you because you're the expert. If you, if you had to find one word or one expression which really captures the essence of what it does, because it really is at the cutting edge of things, what is that word? What is that expression? I'm going to cheat, and it's not a word, but it's an expression. I guess really we see it as a B2B marketplace built specifically for the needs of, capital, of the capital markets industry. Okay, that's, that's quite succinct. That's not too bad. <laughs> that's, that's not too bad. I can, sorry. Yeah, no, you, you're going to say, please. 
No, I mean, I guess, uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, yes, there are other platforms out there, you know, Slack, Team, Zoom, that all, you know, uh, are great products in their own way, but they're, they're kind of maybe not quite the same. They're not built for the needs of the financial services industry. And I think that's the key point. It's this ability to have, in, to drive internal collaboration and efficiency, but at the same time in a secure compliant manner that's, that, that derives business value over and above just simple chat. And that touches on, on another point I was going to raise with you. It's the cases that best fit Symphony so that it brings out the best in the business. When you, if you had to describe those cases that which, which have that perfect fit, what are they? Yeah, Look, so I think for me, and I guess tapping back into my old world a little bit, my old job. So um, I think the mission is really, first of all, to step back and think, if I was unencumbered by legacy, what would great end-to-end -end client service look like? All without being dragged down by any of the scar tissue of how banks have, have done things historically. And so that really means breaking down silos, um, kind of mastering data once and sharing it multiple times, because that really underpins any digital transformation strategy. But, but, and then at the same time, layering kind of modern secure tools to enable collaboration um, and automation. So picking some specific examples of that. Actually, for me, it, it's the front to back and back to back use cases. I'll explain what I mean in a second, where actually the biggest opportunities lie for the industry. When I say front to back, you get this, this phrase, it's often used the front office, kind of the trading floor type environment, back office being things like operation, yeah. legal, et cetera, and kind of front to back being that kind of awkward bridge between the two. You know, I guess based on my experience, it's that front to back and back to back space where there is uh, the biggest concentration of manual, inefficient processes, lots of operational risk that result in lots of stranded costs for banks um, and where there's the, the biggest burden of the legacy technology stack. But that is the space where leveraging Symfony, um, leveraging the open APIs to connect to maybe some legacy systems, but use Symfony as that kind of single pane of glass into yeah. into what's happening front to back throughout it the firm. It simplifies it effectively. That's, that's right. That's right. So think you know things like credit line checking, you know, uh, KYC status, um, trade fails, you know, things that are not necessarily the most exciting, but they're really, but really, really important in really that money important. chain. That's right. That's right. Uh, what would you say are the main relevant findings and trends for collaboration at the moment in each of the major global regions, NA, EMEA, APAC, and of course, Latin America? Yeah, so so I guess uh, maybe obviously in a way, but I guess it's that, it's that permanent chat space, right, which is where there is the, the biggest demand um, uh, and the biggest growth in our business. Um, and we see that really across the board. Um, I think actually uh, then the, the follow-up to that is then using tools like Symfony to then build more sophisticated workflow automation type solutions. Um, and so where do we see the most adv geographically advanced in that space? Probably North America at the moment. Um, but actually, and maybe I'm biased because I sit mainly in Europe, but I think EMEA and actually particularly Asia are rapidly catching up and maybe there's a bit more momentum there as well. LATAM actually, for whatever reason, much slower to adopt. But, um, but yeah, I would, I'd say for, to be honest, for North America, EMEA and Asia, um, that, that they're all going to end up at a, par, at a par quite quickly. Mm, okay, then. And, th for, and, and from the point of view of financial institutions, when they're working with providers, what is it that they need to evaluate? Because as you've identified this space especially, and again, the disparity in performance between these different regions, North America, LATAM, Asia Pacific, et cetera. So given those factors, what do financial institutions have to look at if they're going to work with these providers? Yeah, so I think, I think in a way, irrespective of the region, it really comes down to, to three key points. It is it's security, it's compliance, and it's that importance of the community. Honestly and truly, like, yeah, there's a lot of detail that goes beneath that, but really everything comes back to that, particularly when you talk about financial services. Because financial services, you know, we all know, right, there's, there's some peculiarities in a way. Absolutely. The, the regulatory oversight is just so extreme nowadays. Uh, and that, that creates a certain set of challenges and issues. And so, you know, I guess that's really the opportunity that, that Symphony has seen and is, is pushing into and, and to be that kind of definitive business to business marketplace mm. built for the specific. Yeah, the uh, bridge demanding effectively. Needs. The that's, bridge. Right. that's right, the demanding needs of the financial services mm. sector. Let's talk about cloud, uh, if we could, and, and how that's impacting the way that institutions are collaborating at the moment. Yeah, so like I say, I mean, tapping into my old life, I think that 
banks are in this really tricky situation, right? So on the one hand, they're feeling more pressure than ever before to be innovative in terms of the products they're coming up with, the services they're delivering to their clients, et cetera. At the same time, as we've touched on, they have huge regulatory pressures that are kind of getting worse, not better, to be honest, particularly maybe in Europe. Um, and then at the same time, they have this extra challenge of this cumbersome, horrible legacy technology stack. So trying to bring all those things together is not an easy challenge. Um, and I think the point is that leveraging, cloud, leveraging the cloud means they can build a, upon some of those pre-existing applications because you can't just rip them out in a bank. Mm. That's the problem. You've got to bolt right. something onto them. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So the cloud means that you can you can bolt onto them um, and you can kind of accelerate the innovation cycle in a bank um, and drive towards that um, you know, more client-centric end state. Um, and I guess you know the problem with the cloud, if you like, and the problem in inverted commas, the challenge for the cloud is getting people comfortable with putting, you know, very secure, uh, sorry, very sensitive confidential information in the cloud. And I guess, you know, from a Symfony perspective, you know, that's what we're trying to solve with our end-to-end -end encryption model um, deployed on AWS to, to really solve those challenges, enable our clients to get the benefits, but equally to navigate some of those barriers to adoption. All right, six weeks into the job and you've hit the ground running really, haven't you? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> feel like my feet have touched the ground, I'll be honest, but, uh, but no, look, I'm loving it. It's, uh, it's fantastic, it's fast-paced, uh, and I'm, I'm loving the journey so far. Well, we've loved being with you as well and hearing what you're doing, so hopefully we'll get the chance to hook up with you again at Cybos 2020. But Craig Butterworth, Head of Global Account Management at Symphony. Thank you so much for joining us on Cyboss TV and have a great Cyboss week. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure, you too. Thanks for Brilliant. having me. Thank you. <laughs>